Good morning, everyone. I guess I'm live. My streaming software did something kind of wonky, and it wouldn't roll my intro, my regular intro, so let me know if you can hear me. Uh, number one, it shows I'm live. I think everything's okay. Give me a thumbs up. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Hello. Okay, good. It looks like hopefully you can hear me. It is Friday, October 7th, 2022. Um, I hope everybody has had a great week. It's been a little bit of a rough week here. Um, I don't know how many times, if I, I think I've mentioned it here. I know I've mentioned it on my floss tube. Ethan has not felt well. We thought it was asthma. He actually has walking pneumonia. So he has been home a ton. He does not feel great. And it's just been a week. <laughs> It has been a week. Hello, everyone. It's so good to see everyone. Uh, it is been a little bit, it feels like, since I have uh, visited with you guys. Stamp Timber's over, but never fear. Simon Says Stamp has a, a new release that came out on Thursday. We're blog hopping today, so I had a new video for you yesterday. I have one for you this morning. Plus, we're doing a live, and we're going to use some of the new product. Um, oh, thank you so much, you guys. So today, um, we're going to keep it kind of simple, but it has an amazing effect. And it is one of my favorite things to do is combining multiple colors of embossing powders. And for some reason, I especially think this technique is beautiful with snowflakes. There's a gorgeous new stamp set in the Cozy Hugs release from Simon Says Stamp. And so I thought, what better opportunity to use that multiple embossing powder technique than with this uh, new stamp set and kind of share some ideas and tips and tricks. And even though it is simple to put together and, and to create, the impact is wow. I did a very similar style with the Waffle Flower Stamp Timber set, which was a limited edition exclusive. Plus I have another video from a few years back where I did this uh, the same technique. So we're just kind of refreshing it and doing something a little bit newer, um, a different color combo, if you will, but with something that um, even if it sells out, they'll be bringing back. Let me see. Let me see if I missed anything. I don't think so. Um, I do want to say if you have questions during the live, make sure you put question in all caps or put a big Q or something so it catches my attention and I see it. And I feel like I'm missing some things. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I literally, I don't know. I've not had enough sleep this week. Um, Sandy says, I miss chatting with you at 9 uh, p.m. her time <laughs> uh, and, and tries to chat on every video. Oh, well, thank you, Sandy. I love that. I have to say, I love my chats with you guys. I wish that they were at 9 p.m. for me. If they were at 9 p.m. for me, we would be golden. But I'm having a hard time getting my sleep schedule readjusted. Let's see. Oh, good, Kelly. That's kind of late, but all right. She said her card for me is finally coming. Um, let's see. I hope you had a good birthday, by the way, Kelly. Do, uh, if you haven't subscribed, I would love if you would subscribe, if you would give it let me fix something. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. All of those things help keep bringing you lots of content. I appreciate you guys. And I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you to everyone. I see a lot of you here that were in my late night for me. It wasn't late for everyone else. Chats for Stamp Timber. It was a absolute blast. It was such a good month. I loved every single, well, almost every single night spending that time chatting with you guys about crafting and about stamping and card making and all the things. It was just a blast. So super happy to be back here. A couple of little housekeeping notes. Um, obviously, uh, there's a live today. We're here. I will have a live next week as long as nothing goes wrong in life. However, the week following, and I'd like to say that that's the 
21st, I won't be here. I'm actually uh, doing an event with a couple of friends and I will be teaching to a live group of people. So I will not be here on the 21st. And I just want to give you a heads up. I will post on the community page and let you know ahead of time. So uh, you're not here waiting for me. All right. I hope everybody's getting their orders from Stamp Timber too. That's super fun. Um, if you ordered something from the Cozy Hugs release, let me know in the chat. If there is a specific product from the Cozy Hugs release that you would like to see used, drop me a comment. I would love to know. I'm kind of compiling that information from my recent videos, uh, comments left on recent videos, as well as here, so I can kind of see what you guys are interested in, and so I have an idea of what to do for some upcoming videos. Let's see. Ooh, yay! Shimon just got her, her stamp, Timber Simon Says stamp order. I love that. Oh, hello, uh, Natasha from Belgium. It's her first time here. Welcome. I love seeing first time. Okay, we're going to craft up some Christmas today, if you can believe it. Kelly just got Tim's collab. Has it arrived yet? It was a good one. It was really good. I feel like it sold out faster than last uh, the 2021 uh, collab, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, everybody, let me grab a drink. I have my coffee and my Halloween mug. I have my Halloween mug and some Christmas cards. That's what we're going to do today. This is the card we're going to create. I haven't put it on a card paste yet, so kind of ignore that. We're going to use silver, which I know it's a little harder to see, white and antique gold embossing powders on a blue cardstock base. And what I think is really fun is this is what we're going to start with, and this is what it ends up looking like. The power of stamping and ink is absolutely amazing. It can transform something that is solid into something absolutely magical. And I think that's probably one of my very favorite things about card making and stamping and inking. So, so amazing. Emma says, I bought a, I bought the lot or maybe a lot. <laughs> um, saw the snowflake card, Megan says, and knew I needed the stamp set. I do want to mention really quick that this is the edited video that's on my channel this morning. It's part of the Simon Says Stamp blog hop. Definitely hop today and then there will be a blog hop tomorrow. Leave comments on all the stops along the hop for chances to win. Um, just loads and loads of inspiration using the new product. This is probably my favorite. This and the birdhouse die that I used in yesterday's video and the birds are my favorite products from the release, I think. I don't know, this was one of those releases, and I think I've talked about this before, where when I get the product, I usually separate it into stacks of must use right now, uh, will use in the future, ha like things I have an idea for, things that I know I'll use, and things that I need to think about. Um, this, so much of it went in, I have ideas, I want to use it right now. <laughs> uh, this was definitely one of them. It's absolutely awesome. Everything was colored with Tim's new Distress watercolor pencils. So if you have been wondering uh, what those look like in action, here is a pretty good idea. I've used them a few times, but I think they get easier each time you use them and I love them. So if anyone has been on the fence about it, they're awesome. They really, really are awesome. This is two separate embossing full embossing die combinations. So there's the birdhouse and then there's the friendly birds. So I think this is the, oh, and I suppose I put it away. So maybe I didn't. No, friendly birds and snowy birdhouse. There we go. Um, and I love it. So this is one set and then the birds come with a completely different background. I can show it to you since I have it out. The birds come with this background. But I love that they're separate and you can use them with whatever. Anyway, if you haven't had a chance, that video is up on my channel for viewing at any time. Oh, thank you. Okay, hopefully you guys, I've got multiple Misties set up. 
with my snowflakes. Because, so to save us a little time today, we shall see <laughs> if it actually saves us time or not. Uh, it, it's hard telling. Let me go through the products we're going to use and then we'll get started. So first things up, the, the stamp set that is going to be, maybe I should put our card next to us. The stamp set we're using for the card is Glistening Snowflakes. It's a large six by eight stamp set. There are coordinating dies that come with this. We're gonna do the hanging snow or the three hanging snowflakes right here, and then all of these little snowflakes we're gonna scatter around. But there's also this amazing snowflake Christmas tree, a circular snowflake design, and then I love this one, like you could put sentiments and stuff inside. So this is glistening snowflakes, part of Cozy Hugs. We're using the brand new Mary die. And I'm not going to use the backer for it. I'm just going to use the die cut. And finally, this little sentiment strip here is from another new stamp set. This is Let It Snow and Quality Control Label Maker didn't do a good job there. Ignore that. We're going to use Winter Wishes Headed Your Way, which funny enough is what I picked to use on this card too. Apparently I liked that sentiment. Um, Emma, I don't know what cottontail embossing powder is. I'm not sure what, if, what brand it is, or is it a brand, or is it, I'm, I guess I'm not sure. You may have to explain to me. Yes, it would work fantastic for Gina Kay's Stamp Timber set, uh, stamps, Sandy. So again, if I was creating this just a one-off, I would not have set up my stamps this way. I do wanna preface that, oh, and I, do, I need to adjust this first one, I forgot. I would stamp things and likely, you know, um, clean my stamp and put the new stamps on, put the new stamps on. But be, for demo purposes, I did set up things in my Misty, but I do need to fix this first one because I wasn't planning ahead so good. And it'll give you an idea of how I kind of set things up. So this is a sticky mat insert for the Misty, which holds the card stock in place. You guys have been telling me about it for ever, and I didn't get one, and I finally got it, and I love it. So let me try to get this as straight as possible and hopefully in about the same spot. Actually, you know what we'll do? We're gonna do a little cheat. This should help get it where it needs to go. We're gonna use our previous stamped background and that's the only one I had going the wrong way. Let me make sure that's straight. Or straight-ish. There's going to be quite a lot of embossing here right at first. So it's going to be kind of noisy today, but... Oh, let's see. I think the, the embossing powder... Oh, for static. Okay. Um, oh, you can't get the powder out very well. Oh, I'm not exactly sure why that might be. Is it full? When it gets empty, I will tell you this. When I got mine, I bought the replacement for it and I filled it back up. If it gets too empty, no powder is going to come out because there's no powder in it. I find it works best when it has some more in it. So we are going to prep our cardstock with the powder tool, and I will show you. So see, there's not really anything there. You can kind of do this before you touch the paper. Oh, see, and powder. There we go. And it kind of preps the powder and brings the powder to the thing. So kind of do, I don't want to do too much more. I'm going to have too much powder. 
I'll do it again here in a minute though. But that brings the powder here and then you can just kind of do this. And this still has quite a bit of powder on it. I might have got a little too much powder. Oh, good. Jody says she just watched the mica stains for dyes video and loved it. I'm so glad. The mica stains are my super favorite. I absolutely love them. And I'm going to show you another way to use a mica stain here in a little bit. It gets stuck in the tool, Natasha says. Hmm. Oops. Try um, refilling it if you haven't already and see if that helps. And then my next suggestion would be to uh, email customer service at Rabbit Hole Designs. Just in case that's something that they have encountered, they might have a better suggestion. Also, I know that there's some smear of ink on here. I think I accidentally splattered some of the mica stain that we're going to be using. It won't hurt anything, so I'm just going to leave it. I think I meant to use the other side of this cardstock, but again, we're going to ink this up enough. It is not going to hurt anything. Okay, good, Emma. I'm glad. I'm a sucker for snowflakes too, Kelly. Give me all of the snowflakes. So again, I know it's gonna be loud today because we're doing a lot of embossing. You do wanna make sure your heat tool is really well heated up before bringing it to the cardstock. We wanna to try to keep it as flat as possible. So where I was talking about, and I think I need to zoom out just a tiny bit. Let's try. Because my Misty is not fitting and you're not going to be able to see how I've prepped it. I have different panels. Let's do it this way. So you can see this was like step one. This is going to be step two. And I tried to prep it with things that were going to be gold. So... We're going to put it here. I'm going to double check and make sure. Yeah, I think I didn't stamp it right there. I should have made a diagram for myself. Some of these are right along the edge and some of them are not. That looks pretty good. No overlap. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. And I am just going to make sure, just a little light powder. You know what? Mine might have gotten clogged. Laura says you think it, she thinks it should only take one click. I had so much trouble when it first, when I first got it, but I think I probably should just do one um, now that I've refilled it. I really think refilling it might fix that problem. So we are going to stamp, and I try to stamp as much with one press as possible. Oh, that's not at the very top. Okay, guess what? We're just going to start over. I knew that I was going to mess this up. So we're going to flip it over. And it's not there. I need to go down. I think these are both down one. I knew I would booger that up somewhere. It seemed like such a good idea to prep all my snowflakes. <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't turn into a disaster. I don't really want to get embossing powder on my sticky mat, so there's going to be a lot of moving things around today to make this work the best. All right, we're going to start again.
<laughs> That's so funny, Susie. Her vacuum's trying to clean. I like that you named it Jetson. That's fun. Mine's name is Frank. The kids named it. We have a funny reason why. It's funny to us. It's probably not funny to anyone else. All right, now let's double check this. Yes, that's so much better. It just, if you do yours this way, like I said, you wouldn't. You would stamp one, clean it, then you'd reposition the next stamps. You know how you do. For demo purposes though, I thought it would be easier than fiddling with all of my stamps for an hour that we, I would put them all in Misty's. Okay, so this is going to be some gold snowflakes. And this could be any color of embossing powder. I tend to love the, the silver, uh, pardon me, silver, gold, and white for holiday on any color of cardstock. But it could be anything. Our Roomba is named Fred. Oh, that's so funny. And it's already looking super pretty. So let's move this Misty out of the way. We're done with that one. Let's do our last hanging snowflake. And I've got another sticky mat in my old Misty. Oldie buddy goodie. I'm not exactly sure where this one goes. I'm pretty sure that I did this one down a little bit too. Let's see. think let's shift it over I did clean all of these last night and I think the only thing is I'm gonna have to re I'm gonna have to put that one back all right let's just make sure we still have powder everything gonna stamp good looks like it and these are going to be silver so I did the hanging snowflakes and then just some randoms in all three colors to start with. And then the remaining snowflakes that we're going to add will be in a couple of different colors, which I'll show here in a second. Oh yeah, Melissa, I had kind of forgot about that whimsy one. Those are the whimsy pattern paper snowflake cards. I was thinking of a different video, but you're right. I did do some kind of similar. I loved that pattern paper from Whimsy Stamps. I wish they'd bring that back. I still have mine, but I don't think it's available. If it is, will you guys let me know? It's my favorite pattern paper of all time. Our favorite winter I guess I should say doodle bug is probably my favorite pattern paper of all time the just basic rainbow all right let me see where I think these go oh yeah not this one don't feel like that's in the right place. Did I flip my panel around? Could have, I guess. No, that's not right. We may have to rearrange my snowflakes. My good plan was not the best plan. It's fine. So let's go ahead and do the other Misty first and then I can figure out where these guys go. The big white snowflake. So I'll show you here on the one. I just kind of offset this one for opposite side than this one. 
So it's going to go really, I think it goes down here. Yeah, it does. And these are both going to be white. Yes, absolutely. The Gina K stamp timber set for this technique would be amazing. I can't even begin to tell you how terrified I am that I'm going to spill. I have these three embossing powders open that I'm going to spill one and have embossing powder everywhere. We are done with white, so I am going to shut this. Hello, everybody just coming in. How is everyone today? All right, we need to figure out where these last two images go. So let's do this. And actually, let's go right here. I think this one goes right here. Well, and I've somehow got some hair. That's awesome. Or here. And where's this last one? Hold please while I figure out what I'm doing. Oh, never mind. So one goes, it doesn't really matter. One here and one here. But let's put it the right direction. I love my good plan didn't work out so good. Real life. Guess you're, oh, my cardstock's popping up. All right. Lynn says, I'm trying again since I told you I'd never make it. That's funny. I'm so glad you're here. Oh no, you put excess gold into the silver pot. I've done that before too. So annoying. Okay, the only thing I did different here, and I didn't plan on it at the time, but I'm going to show you because I did. This one's going to be gold, and I think this one's going to be silver is how I ended up doing it. So we're just going to tap on a little gold on that one, a little silver over here. Let's heat these up and then let's put the embossing powder away so I don't make a mess while we're live. Okay, embossing is done. Now I did emboss the sentiment, but I did this off camera, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm gonna put my lids on and get this out of my way. So we can do some inking. And I'm cleaning as I go. I don't know if you guys saw my stories last weekend, but I did a massive uh, craft room cleanup and I have kept it clean all week, if you can even believe it. I'm so happy. It is so, and I've even cleaned up a few other things. Oh, it made a, a, a nice mix. You know, the great thing about that is if you mix embossing powders, then you can kind of just save that one to be like, a, like you said, a mix where you can maybe use it for something that you want to be silver and gold. I think that would be kind of pretty. All right, let's get some brushes out. And we need our blue and our blacks because believe it or not, we're going to do some black after we've done our blue. 
I, this is surf blue cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I guess I should have mentioned that earlier. We're gonna use Uncharted Mariner to ink around this. And that is what's going to make this nice moody background that really makes our snowflakes pop. So we are gonna go ahead. I do have a separate set of ink blending tools for Distress Oxide inks. And we're gonna just kind of start by going around the edges and pulling that color in towards the center. Close enough for this early, Siobhan says. Thank you. Thanks guys for giving me some grace. Honestly, this week has been kind of a disaster. So I appreciate it. <sighs> it's fine though, it will all be fine. I always remind myself it just does, these things don't last. It does tend to all pile up all at once, but it does not last. It will be fine. And I'm just glad he, I've kept him home. Well, he doesn't feel well enough to go to school, but I've kept him home just to kind of, so I can monitor. And I think I've said here he's asthmatic, which makes it worse. All breathing issues with him have always caused me great stress. And I know if anyone is asthmatic or has someone who is, you know. Thank you so much, Jane. She says your card is so pretty. Love Uncharted Mariner, Jenny said. You know what's funny, Jenny? My un so when I did my craft room cleanup, that's where I was going with my craft room cleanup story. I had forgotten this color came out because I didn't put it where it was supposed to go. That irritates me because it is a gorgeous color. You're, you're going to see it in everything now, for sure. Because I found it and I, I remembered, oh yeah, uh, we're going to see it in everything. Next, I'm going to go around the edges with my black soot. And I know black soot seems like it wouldn't be a holiday color, but I love that moodiness it adds. And we don't want to go super full on dark black, but I love how it just frames this up. The embossed areas are going to resist our ink and we're going to give it a really good buff here in a minute to get anything off the top of the embossing. So I'm just going around those edges like that and then we're going to go back with our blue. I may just put a little more ink on there. And we're just gonna make sure we've got a really nice blend. Blending that black soot into the Uncharted Mariner. And then of course, into that lightest area, which we've really pretty much covered up the surf blue cardstock. But the benefit of starting with a colorful cardstock is that you don't have to use near as much ink to get coverage. And you don't have to use as many ink colors because our base is a light blue. So what I normally would have probably used, let's say a speckled egg for, or a tumbled glass, and then Uncharted Mariner and Black Soot, we've only had to use two inks because we started with a colored cardstock. And I love that about a colored cardstock. It just kind of eliminates that extra step. All right, let's clean up our work surface. Oh, thank, Handmade Not Hallmark said this is one of her favorite techniques. Oh, Marcy, I'm so glad. She said she wants to do more ink blended backgrounds. They are so fun. Sometimes I like to just make backgrounds even when I don't have a plan for what to do with it. All right, let's see which one. I think this is, that's wet. Let's not use that. Let's get out of a dry cloth. So remember I said we need to buff the ink off of our embossing so it ends up being nice and bright again. You can take a paper towel. I'm just using a dry microfiber cloth and I'm pretty aggressively buffing that ink away. And it's picking some up. My cloths are stained. They're not dirty, I promise. I wash them, but they're stained. They're well loved. And there we go. Now, of course, I need more sparkle. I need more like falling snow, right? We all need more of that, I'm sure of it. 
so I'm going to grab my handy dandy splatter box, which is just a plastic box from Walmart. It's the Sterilite brand. It's a lidded box, but I love them. It's fairly shallow. Let's see. I missed a question here. Hold on. Beatrice said, with using multiple different inks from various companies, do you store them on shelves or in a drawer? I'm still organizing. Mine are all um, stored in drawers. I don't necessarily want to say that that's the best way to store them because I know that I'll probably get told it's not. It's what works for me. I don't like mine out in the open. I like mine put away in drawers. I have done both ways, but I find that I like mine in drawers. And I am going to show that I cleaned my office because we're getting ready for the big filming. It's finally in a spot where it can be filmed. I'm going to use some white gouache. I've just put it in my splatter box. I am going to add a tiny little bit of water to it. And I did remove my background so I didn't get any um, wa uh, water splatter. And we're just going to add snow. And I've got a small paintbrush here. And we're just going to make sure the background is completely splattered up here with snow. And then Oh, Nancy, I wish my son outgrew his. My brother didn't outgrow his either, so it doesn't give me a ton of hope. I'm a little, my brother manages it better now. I mean, obviously he's, how old am I? I got to think real fast. <laughs> he's 43, um, and he still carries a rescue inhaler. Ethan, and I don't see Ethan's improving with age. I it's better managed because he knows, but it's kind of frustrating. So this is Winter Frost Distress Mica Stain. And even though I am not going to pump it and spray it, I am going to make sure it's really well mixed up. So you want to hear the little ball in there shaking around. And really, you're supposed to kind of do it like, a, like you're ringing a bell. Oh, thank you, Handmade Not Hallmark. That is so nice. Love the color, Rhonda says. Lots of love the color. Oh, good. And like this technique. Well, is it going to be one of those days where I'm just, let's just shake it off camera. You can use um, Distress Ink. Absolutely. In fact, Terry, you can ins you don't have to use Distress Ink at all if you don't want to. You could totally use um, Simon Says Stamp Positively Saturated Inks, Pink Fresh Inks, whatever your favorite ink company is for this. I think you should be able to get the ink off of the embossing. Wow. Why is that ball not shaking around? Natasha said, I stopped counting her age at 35. She uses a calculator to figure out. Yeah. Well, I know I I had Ethan um, the day before I turned 30. And so I always know that's how I can calculate my age. <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? Okay, I don't know what's going on. It should be shook up, though. So this is my tip if you don't want to spray. I take the little sprayer, I take the, the top off, and I dip my paintbrush in here, and just like the gouache, we're gonna splatter. So it's controlled mica stain instead of a huge splatter because I think it would ru ruin the look. In fact, I know it would. I practiced on just a plain piece of cardstock to see if I could get a controlled, and you just really can't. So I love, I love the mica stains because of the sparkle and the shimmer but that gives you a controlled look. And you can see it went on really dark, but this is exactly what I used here. And see those little blue shimmer, darker blue shimmery pieces? It dries so, so pretty. So now we have to let that dry before we can put it all together. And I will have, oh, oh, now I can hear the ball rolling around. That's great. Let's go ahead and move this and I'm a mess. I can't do any inking without becoming a huge mess. 
Let me just spray my hand and see if I can clean myself up a little bit. Perfect Pearls in Little Mini Sprayer is great, Handmade Not Hallmark said. Absolutely. And Hero Arts has one of my favorite, shim the Iridescent Shimmer from Hero Arts is one of my favorites. I love that one. Okay, so the Mary die, I die cut three of them. And one of them is from the Silver Matte cardstock and two from White. And we're just going to glue those one on top of another. I'm going to grab some tweezers. Marie says that this is my favorite color. Oh, that's awesome. And Jenny says she always is super inky. Good. I'm not, I'm glad I'm not alone. Oh, thank you, Rebecca. So we just want to make sure I'm going to glue the white on white first. And this, you wouldn't have to do this, but I like a little dimension for my die cut sentiments. So I'm going to glue those on top of each other. And then we're going to take the silver greeting. And we are going to glue this on top. Handmade Not Hallmark says, I love how you offset the greeting so it doesn't cover up the large Mary greeting. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't want to cover up the tail in Mary. I think it's hard to read. And it ended up being kind of cute that way. And I'll show you. Uh, visually, I don't love to do that because sometimes I don't think it looks good. But I added hearts over here so it kind of balanced it out. So that was my, my way of making that hopefully balance. Let's go ahead and heat up our mica stain a little bit to speed up our drying time today. I often do not do this, but for the sake of our time and twiddling our thumbs, waiting for it to dry, we're going to today. And it does dry really nicely. My personal preference is always air dry. That's the only thing. But with mica stains, I don't mind it. So you can see now it's dry and how pretty it is. I love it. Okay, let's go ahead and glue the Mary down first and put something heavy on top to kind of help squish those layers together. There's my technical term. So kind of right about there, I say. Hopefully that's not too high. And I always just keep my old acrylic blocks that I don't really stamp with anymore. And we're just going to do that. And Lisa says you make splattering look so easy. I get paint everywhere. I used to get paint everywhere too. I promise just a box. If you don't have a plastic box, just use a regular box. Um, it really does help. But I sure like my plastic box because I just re wash it out and reuse it. Oh, Jody, I'm so glad you get to watch live too. Oh no, Liz says she got so mesmerized watching she has very, very hard boiled eggs. <laughs> so then we're going to, whoops, pop our little sentiment strip, which again, I did that off camera. Just a little time saver today. And I'm 
and embellishing. I'm going to grab my little triangle trays. I've got some Pretty Peak Posh Metallic Silver Pearls. And I'm just going to put some out here in a tray. I've got some Metallic Gold. And then I have some uh, Trinity Stamps, Tic Tac Jelly Hearts, and White. And we're going to start with those first. And I'm going to use three of those on my card. We're going to do one right here in the center of the biggest snowflake. And then we're going to do one here and one here. And that's going to kind of help balance this bottom section just a little bit better, having a little something over here. So I'm going to grab my embellishment wand and we're going to pop, whoops, our hearts in place. This style of card really lends itself nicely to lots of little embellishing. Of course, I don't need an excuse really, do I? <laughs> Kelly says, would not be a Nicole card without the hearts. That's kind of true. I love them. We know. I am going to be cleaning these up as I go because I have been spilling lately. I don't know what my issue is, but I've been a disaster. I'm going to move these up here. I know it's out of the frame a little bit, but hopefully I won't hit them. I'm going to try to do these silver ones first. And it does not matter. I literally just kind of mixed and matched whether I used um, silver or gold for the rest of these. And you could totally use a different color as well. I just kind of tried to stick with the same color I was using for um, my embossing. I sure hope I have enough of these little guys left. I used a ton of them to emboss this big snowflake. Now, I did use a ton for this snowflake, and it's the only one that I really went um, all in on, I guess I would say. And that was on purpose. It's the biggest one, but I think it would be a little bit, oh, I'm about spilled, too many uh, to do that for all of them. So we're just going to start looking for the tiny... You guys know how I wish that their containers had all the small size because that's my favorite and I use the most of those. So now I have to dig through here and find all of them. Let me see if I'm missing anything. Oh, good. Hand made not Hallmark says, do you have trouble with your embellishment wand not picking things up? Yes, if the tip is dirty. Um, I, several months ago, ordered bunches of these tips. And when I can't get it to pick things up anymore, I replace it with a new tip and it works great. Because I use it so often, I felt like that was probably a good investment for me because I get really irritated when it won't pick things up. We may have to use two trays to find all the little ones. <laughs> oh, there they are hiding. Do you guys like little embellishments too? I find myself always drawn to them. All right, let's add some gold now. Well, maybe, here, let's dump all this silver back in here. 
I might divide my gold between these two as well so it's easier to pick up what I want. There's my little one. Go the right way. There we go. I hate when I can't get the pearls to turn over the right way. We need another little one. Oh, that one's little enough. And let's see, I think I want one for here. And I think I did one here. Do we, there we go. I think, let me double check and make, oh no, I missed one right up here, didn't I? There we go. Let me double check. I think that's it, you guys. I think we have embellishments on all of them. Yeah, Ginger, I wish they'd only put in a few of the bigger ones too because I don't use them very often. Okay, let's see. I think I missed a comment. Let me go back up here. Michelle, all of your Christmas cards have been done for two months. Oh my gosh, I'm so impressed. Oh, is it Reva? I hope I said that right. She said the older style of pickup wand said to clean tip with scotch tape, and I wonder if that would work with a wax tip. I have no idea, but that's a great tip. All right. So there's our cards, super easy, beautiful in any color. Um, the Stamp Timber cards I did with the Waffle Flower set, I did red and green. Those are two of my personal favorites. Blue is obviously so, so pretty with snowflakes. Consider doing this though with colorful embossing powders. If you have some colors that you like to use, I think that would be pretty. I think a pink background, a purple background would be awesome. There are just lots and lots of different colors to start with. And then use in your embossing powders, even if you only have a couple, or maybe you just want to do one, that would be super pretty as well. All right, let me flip around. Did I miss anybody's question? If I did, can you please drop me a comment and let me know? You'll have to let me know what you're doing this weekend. I didn't even get a chance to ask. Is anybody getting to craft? Marcy says, I am such a sucker for snowflakes. What blue is that? Uncharted Mariner. And everything is I'm using is in the description below the video here. And there's links to it so you can easily find it. Shimon says, I haven't even finished or started. <laughs> I haven't even started my Halloween cards. <laughs> Question, Laura says, I've only ever ink blended on smooth white card. Does the brand type make a difference? It can. This is smooth uh, colored cardstock. So I don't think that I don't have any more of a difficult time on this than others. Um, I use Nina cardstock a lot. But if you used Hammer Mill cardstock or Bristol Smooth, it ink blends even smoother. Um, so yes, so cardstocks will make a difference in how things ink blend. And I think it's just really personal preference what you like to use. Sleepy Hollow this weekend. Oh, that sounds fun. Craft day at church. Craft show and scrapbooking. Oh my goodness, Thanksgiving weekend in Canada. Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh my gosh. Kathleen's going to try crafting, celebrating my son this weekend. He is homecoming king. Oh, that's awesome. Love that. Yes, happy Thanksgiving to all of our Canadian friends. Oh, Sandy says she puts her picker, her embellishment picker wand in a little glitter glue and, wait, of course, art glitter glue and lets it dry and it makes it tacky. Tim Holtz live tomorrow, Emma says. Shimon's starting a new Halloween cross stitch. Oh, fun. 
Daniel's allergies are bothering her. It They're bad this year. Cassie said, got my new posh to Christmas stitching dice, so I'll be making ornaments. I got mine too. I got mine too. I'm so excited. Oh, Bonnie's doing the Pink Fresh Studio holiday class. I didn't realize that was there. Tina's posh to order is coming today. I love it. Glad to see all of you guys supporting um, Lizzie. That's awesome. She has fantastic stitching dies. Fantastic. I know for anyone who's been asking for stitching dies, she has the best and she will be restocking. So um, definitely sign up for her newsletter and follow her on Instagram so that when she does do restocks, if you're interested at all, you can be the first to know. That's how I get mine. Shari's working on videos and needs to finish Scout's quilt. Yes, you do need to finish little, little Miss Scout's quilt. Hello from Puerto Rico. Going to make more Christmas cards. And Cassie's stuck stocking the pumpkin dies. Yes, I was so excited to get those on the last restock, I think. I'm super excited. I'd like to try to maybe do some of those this weekend. We shall see. I have to prep for the, the event I'm having in a couple weeks. So I'm going to be doing a lot of kit prep this weekend. I'm kidding up. Uh, felt project. I don't know if anybody's here who's coming. Uh, if you are, holler, shout at me, let me know. I'm kidding up a felt project. We're going to do a felt ornament. Um, that's kind of an extra. And then I've got to kit up some fun Lawn Fawn interactive stuff that we're going to be doing for our cl interactive class. I'm super excited. And that's probably all I'll get done. That That's enough. The other class will have to be kitted next week when Lori and Lori can help me. <laughs> Oh, yay! Finally got Lawn Fawn coffee cup dies. That's awesome. Okay, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like the video, so subscribe if you haven't already. Um, we're inching closer and closer to 100,000. I am so excited. Like I said, we're going to have a huge party here when we hit that milestone and I am going to have some really fun giveaways and we're just going to celebrate. Um, Nancy says, are you doing anything with the spellbinders this year? No, I'm not. Um, let's see. Jessica's thinking of going to Comic Con in New York City. Oh, that's fun. All right, you guys. Um, if you haven't already, when the video's over, drop me a comment in the description. Please let me know if there's anything from Cozy Hugs release that you would like to see me use in a future video. I'm working um, a little bit further out in this month and I'd like to know if there's anything you'd like to see used. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend. You get some crafting time in or some relaxation time in and I will see you guys all here next week. Bye. The supplies used in today's video are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another project that you might be interested in. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss a new live video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.